Hi guys, hi YouTubers, hi followers. In this video guys, we are going to be talking about Simulate, Bit Defender, and and the reason why it's a perfect solution moving forward. Also adding Navico back to recovery. So Bit Defender. They offer a service and a solution called Gravity Zone. Bitdefender Gravity Zone really doesn't need much of this option with the previous videos I've done and the webinar. It's a complete management interface where you can manage your whole network with one single pane of glass. You name it and Bitdefender can do it. You've got your security, you've got advanced threats, you've got ATP attacks, you've got your web filtering, you've got your web policies, you name it, it's in that one interface. I've added a webinar and an overview video of the Bitdefender Gravity Zone. The reason why we have chosen to go with them is because they are one of the market leaders and they are constantly reinvesting with their profits into making their business, their business model and their solution better. On top of that, they have a fantastic, friendly UK and 24-7 technical support and not to mention the sales managers that you work with. Working with Bitdefender, I wish I did sooner. On top of that, we work with Nikiva. It's a backup and recovery solution. We are a reseller and an MSP with Nikiva, and the same with Bitdefender, and we are just a reseller with Simulate for now. The reason we have chosen to get rid of our other antivirus vendors and to go with Bitdefender, and the reason I've got rid of all the backup solutions and got rid of Kiva, and the reason we've got rid of other solutions and got rid Simulate. The reason we've added them three solutions is because they have a complete network security. Simulate puts attacks on the network, it tests your antivirus systems, your security systems that are in place to say the latest attacks from say five seconds ago. If there's an attack on the network, if it would get through, what do you need to do? That is a perfect solution. Because you could go to manager and say, look, we're using this antivirus, but actually, we should be using this feature. Yes, it is, say, this much more expensive, but actually, we've just run an attack on the network, and currently, the solution we have is missed it. This is the reason why, and this is the steps out to do, simulate, recommend you do to stop that type of attack, but it was on an isolated machine, a server, a network, a network show where all the data is. You cannot compromise on data. Bitdefender is perfect because it's monitoring the network from every angle. Within the webinar that was shown, it's gone over all of the features. Personally, my favourite features are the use of use, the installation, the support. Nothing with Bitdefender is too much. You've always got someone at the end of the phone that you can ask a question to. But personally, working with other vendors and then moving to Bitdefender, I was very dubious of doing it. But I wish I did it sooner because Bitdefender is a simple solution. It's not overpowering, it's not over complex to use. What it says is what it does. And I think that is what a lot of solutions get wrong and then you make it over complex and buy other companies. Bitdefender, no, to build it from the ground up, perfect solution. Works for absolutely cyber services because we offer a monitoring service 24 7, 365 days a year. So, if you need that work, our team will remove it and then monitor your network. Alongside offering a bit defender, we can monitor your networks, we can help you set it up or even install it. Navi Nakiva offering a backup and recovery solution. We have worked with other vendors where the backup and recovery and the solutions are okay. But what I love about the key though is the simplicity and the speed it has in recovery. The support again is absolutely second to none. These three vendors that we have brought on are going to bring an absolute change across all of the organisations that we work with. Along with all the organisations we work with, this is going to be a very big change. We are aware that some customers may be dubious of moving away from the current vendors. And as stated in the previous video, we are more than happy to help you move over, to answer any questions, to watch a webinar, 
to help you with anything. Nothing is too big or too small. If you are unhappy, we are more than happy to help you find another vendor that can either stick with the solution that you've currently got, or if you stay with us, we can offer the same level of service with a brand new product that offers this, this, and this as a benefit, which obviously we all discuss when we are dealing with you as a customer, because every customer and every need is different. Now, what I love about all these solutions is the scalable. The sky is the limit with each solution. With other vendors that we've worked with, we've always had an issue where when it gets to a certain amount, the network goes slow, the backup's slow, the recovery's slow, or when it gets to, say, certain file type. With Nikivo, with Bitdefender working alongside Nikivo, constantly monitoring the network, Nikivo backing up the network, simulating testing the network, they are a three perfect solutions that work, side, that work alongside each other. What I love is that it is a complete and unified solution. We understand that every business and every customer has different needs. We understand that certain businesses may want the future now or may not want the future at all. But we are offering it as a service. So whether you would like us to offer a free attack on your network to show you that your antivirus okay does need to be changed, that's a free service. It doesn't cost anything. And we're more than happy to do that for you. And then we can create an executive report. And if we found anything, then you can go to your executive team and say, look, we've been to absolute cyber services part of ACS corporation. If you give us a free network attack, testing our current solutions and things that we have in place, and actually things aren't up to par. To give us this report and explain what we need to do, they can offer the services. That is a very good conversation starter because it's actually showing what the solution has found. And then it is telling in great detail, but in simple terms, what needs to be done, how to stop the attack, and then after you've implemented that, we can test the network again, and we can see actually, you've now implemented them changes, Big Defenders not detected anything, simulates working, and there's no attacks. The reason I love it is because you can have simulate running on a machine with no antivirus, and obviously it will detect things. But if you have simulate running with Bitdefender or any other vendor, but obviously for us it's Bitdefender, you can see that Bitdefender comes into its own because it is stopping 100% of the simulator tasks, even viruses that are less than 10 seconds old. Whereas other vendors, because they're updating between 10 and 4 hours, they're missing a lot of attacks. And of course, there are vendors that offer machine learning and what's benign and what's real and what's fake. But what I love about Bitdefender is the engine is constantly updating. That means that the endpoint agent will only get updated from what I've been told twice a month. That's what I've been told by my account manager. That means that the agent will always be up to date except when they do updates. That means that the engine is connected to the agent it's constantly being updated with the latest threats and everything so you're constantly up to date to update the agent it's simple gpo it mmc it mdt it sccm it and it's done simple what i also love is the features it's such a rich product bit defender working alongside simulate working alongside the kiva so simulate attacks network bit defender detects it hang on if Bitdefender doesn't detect it, it can go into quarantine. If it gets past that, you've then got Bitdefender support. You've got my team, my engineer support. On top of that, we can liaise with Bitdefender themselves and also the vendor that we work with. And if that doesn't work, that's when the keyboard comes into its element. We can do the recovery to a virtual machine from whenever you've done the latest backup. And the keyboard is instant. It could be in a virtual machine. So why else the server is being repaired or fixed or it's a hardware failure you can work and have the network up causing minimum disruption to the day now we do understand in the educational sector that a lot of schools use matrium reflect because they are well known in the educational sector 
just how it suffers is. So we do understand that in the educational side of the business, there are some hurdles where some councils say you can't run the latest version. It's got to be two versions prior. So version 10, you run version 8. Some vendors will allow that. Some vendors won't. But we can obviously have that discussion with yourselves close to the time we can say, well, actually, look, we do prefer you to run the latest. Here's the reasons why. We do understand that some skills and governments and councils will allow it and some won't. But whatever the solution is being implemented, whether it is an Akiva, whether it is Bitdefender, or whether it is a test on the network, we will always make sure that we adhere to the local policies that you've got set up your business, as well as keeping your customer as well as keeping your client and your customer data safe and following the policies that we have set as an organization as well. The reason why I've got rid of a lot of partners is because I don't see them bringing value to the customers and the services that we offer. So far, I've got rid of about 36 partners, and since ACS Corporation started taking over as the holding company of all the other companies, I've noticed a humongous change in the way that the IT industry is going. And that is fantastic because more and more customers are moving to the MSP models. That's fantastic. But at the same time, a select few customers are still going down this traditional reseller route. That's still not a problem. We can offer that as a service. But we are wanting to move more customers onto the MSP side because it is cheaper. You get better benefits. For example, the reseller, you get a one-year support, one-year maintenance. Then you have to renew it, which costs money. And also money. Per license, it can add up even if you get a 50% discount. Whereas, the MSP, you're paying per month. So every month you're paying, you're getting all the updates, you're getting all the support, all the upgrades as well. That's it. That is a huge selling point. And on top of that, you can add on and you can take off as many as you want. You just need to let us know a couple of days in advance to make the changes at Bitdefender so we don't charge you for the extra licenses, for example, just using Bitdefender. And then the changes will go through. But the MSP is the route to go. But of course, there are certain organisations that will require certain services and certain reseller type models, let's say. But I cannot wait to work more with our clients moving forward with Kivo, Bitdefender, as well as our fantastic solution, Simulate. This is going to be an exciting year for the ACS corporation and all the companies underneath it, as well as working with all the customers that we have around the world, whether it's hospitality, education, corporate, SMB, large enterprise, you name it, we can cover it. No request is too big or small. You can contact us 24 7, 365 days a year. No request is too big or small. If you request any further information, you can contact us on the website down below. If you require any webinars or any technical trainings or product overviews, <clears throat> please let us know. And what we will do is either one of the team will host the webinar. What we also like to do is we like to get a technical expert on directly from the company. For example, we can get a technical agent from Bitdefender. If there's questions that my team may not know or I may not know, at least that way you're covered. And that way it's making it a little more professional and more friendly. But we are more than happy to assist you. Thank you for the ongoing support through COVID and for all the changes they're making. And I cannot wait to contact with you again in the future moving forward just before we go now <clears throat> with regard to the licenses whether it's your yearly license that you're coming to expire we will contact you in due, in due course and we will let you know in advanced time to give you time to test the solution or if you want to move away we are we're happy to do that for you to take the level of out of it to show that there's no hard feelings. I think courtesy goes a long way. 
The reason why we want to do that is because we want to give you the data day trial. If you don't want an instant where you install your page installation and you don't like it, because then you have to roll back all the changes and all the machines open. And that's going to be quite crazy. Personally, that isn't what we recommend anyway, and this is why we offer the webinars and the services and the tech solutions that we offer. At this moment in time, we are not adding any more partners as yet within the next two months. We have requested further information from certain solutions that will work alongside the three solutions that we just talked about. Do will enhance your security even more because it just takes one click of a button and that solution called the infecting network it's just one judgment and this is why we work with vendors like CyberSmart or know before so you can educate your employees by giving them tests like a 20 second or 20 question quiz asking them is this a real email is this a fake email and then you can narrow it down to your department and to your staff say right case we can see you've got 18 out of 20 for that choice you failed on a phishing email from amazon we recommend that we give you a bit more training and that way not only is it helping you in the work environment protecting the work keeping data safe and more secure but at the same time it is also educating users with true and real life experiences but what i love about no before is the fact that you can customize the templates so whatever you want, you can see whatever logo, whatever text, or there is a whole library that you can use. For example, you could choose IT field, it's a whole list there. You just pick what you want, you select the user you want to deploy it to, and it's gone over the network. I think the solutions that we're focused on, which is Bitdefender, Gravity Zone, Bitdefender, Gravity Zone, sorry, Akivo, Backman Recovery. And on top of that, Simulate, and then adding in a bit of information about smart uh, cyber smart and know before is just a perfect alternative to adding that extra bit of security. As you can see behind us, we have some awards from technicals and sales professionals. We are adding more so we can give you further assistance, whether that's technical support, sales advice. Or sales training. Thank you once again for the ongoing support and we look forward to doing business with you moving forward. Hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. This conference will now be recorded. All right. moment okay All right, so uh, can you please tell me in this way more about the customer you have at the moment? Just tell me you have some specific customers or you'd like in general uh, get some more details about Nakiva at the moment. So the way that my companies are set up is I have one made holding company and under there I have four separate organizations, one of them being cyber services. That company is purely based on anything related to backup, disaster recovery, anything that is kind of built into the security of the backup solution and the recovery. And then I have another company uh, called Absolute Cyber Services, which has 50 staffing behind me. That's more of a NDR, XDR, antivirus type of solution protecting the networks. And then they have just a small other consumer side of the business. But with regard to Nativo, I'd be looking it in to cyber services and then at a later stage potentially rolling it out 
to absolute cyber services the majority of the customers are into two categories so they fit into one of the companies depending on their criteria and what their requirements are but one customer can range from having 100 machines to 20,000 machines in so inside oh, right. many ones in cyber services I have 2,119 customers, but each customer or client can range from 100 to 20,000 machines. But I only have four customers that have 20,000 plus machines. All right, all right. It's like the environment we're talking about at the moment. I've split it up in that way because I find it better in a way that I can provide dedicated and better solutions to meet the customer's needs. Because in the, because in the past it was quite a few solutions and they weren't bringing value to either me as an MSP and partner, or they weren't giving what I would deem as an acceptable level of support either to a partner or to a customer if they're having an issue. For me, I like to get hands on with the product so I at least understand it as well as then I can go to the customer and say, Well, I've tested it, I've seen it, I know what this product's like. I don't really onboard products unless I've not tested them. Last night, I did request an NFR license, which I can see has gone to a, a manager and it says someone will reach out to me. All right. Maybe you'd like us to show the Nakiva interface how it works. Yeah, and for me to get very familiar with it again. I think it will be much more useful because uh, we already have such kind of meetings and I already told you, probably my colleague Jaden already told you, uh, all of you in the Kiva. All right. So you're basically looking for the MSP option, correctly, Thomas? Uh, first of all, I start off as a reseller and then I transition over to an MSP. The reason I've always done that is because I like to prove myself to a company. Um, because in the past, I've done an MSP with a certain vendor and they basically caused quite a lot of issues. So I start with a reseller and then move to an MSP. I work with four companies on an MSP basis so far, and I've just recently onboarded another one last week. So I am slowly transitioning over to the MSP, but for now I would stick as a reseller. All right, all right. Um, Alexander, uh, do you have the access to the VPN connection to show uh, to Thomas and uh, Nikki interface, please? Okay, um, would you like me to show you MSP interface or single user interface? It would be, I'd be looking at the reseller, so I presume it'd just be the single interface and not the MSP. Okay, so okay. it would be the single tenant director. Okay, okay. So please let me present. Uh, me All right, this. yes. Okay. Uh, now you see my blank screen, okay? Yes, I do. Mm, yes, so yes. Let me put there my environment in a second. Okay, so a single user uh, environment, single user uh, web interface is look like a uh, link to a machine, to virtual physical machine on NES, or maybe EC2 instance, Amazon Institute instance where you install our uh, appliance, our director. And usually we use uh, port 343 to connect to our uh, appliance, but you can change it uh, during the installation of our product. So what you can see when you logged to our environment, you see uh, there is a panel from the left where you can select dashboard, monitoring, activities, calendar, search, and settings. Now we are in settings. And in these settings, you can customize uh, SMTP server 
to be able to send to receive uh, reports uh, monitoring events and so on from our product also you can select what, what uh, email notification uh, notifications you want to get what reports you can select what uh, users uh, you want uh, to uh, <clears throat> to allow uh, to use our product you see that there are several roles for each users you see it could be one second it could be administrator it could be uh, okay let me let me create new one and you will see how it can be changed so if i click on plus i can For example, you see when you select a go to the row uh, top of our wizard, user creation wizard, you can assign administrator, backup, or recovery operator of you only. So you may give access to any users you want and assign uh, them any roles you, you can see now. Okay just in self backup you need to decide how often you want to back up uh, the internal database of our product so that you can uh, recover from it if it's necessary in uh, la last version in last version uh, which is 10 points uh, 10.6.1 you may use external database so you can uh, assign some database in PostgreSQL server and use it as a database of our product externally it will allow you to for example if you have too many items to back up it will allow you to extend availabilities uh, of uh, your database and uh, else it they will save uh, the configuration of our product on external server and in any time if uh, our production environment goes down you may create new one and just export database from external server okay so we support uh, both internal and external databases you may select you can you may uh, customize some system settings if you go there you can see what which one in basis bandwidth throttling you can uh, limit uh, the usage of our by our product usage of uh, local uh, network so for example if you want to create to limit uh, our software for example, the job with not this one. One second. If you want to limit uh, the usage of your local network by 10 megabits, you may create new rule, and uh, our software will not exceed these limits. And it's uh, useful if you schedule backup or replication job during the working, or working hours and you don't want that our software occupied all your network. Now in BrainLink you can add some details about your company. Also you can create or add some logos, backgrounds and so on. In events you can find any event that took place uh, in your environment since the first installation. In software update, you can see the, uh, the version you have now, and if necessary, you can click check for updates and get information about new version. But by default, uh, you will get some alert if new version uh, published in our on our site. 
In licensing, you can see the details of a work license, how many workloads, licenses, subscriptions you have, MS365, and so on. So let's go to the main database options. So it's inventory. Inventory allows you to add any objects you want to involve in the backup replication and recovery process. If you click on new, you can add virtual VMware, Hyper-V, Nutanix object. So you need to add some account that will allow you to uh, add uh, virtual machines from this virtual environment. If you have MS365 account, you can add it, and this will allow you to make backups of your mailboxes, OneDrive, SharePoint site, and in uh, our new, newest version, uh, it's better now, 10.7, we also allow to make backup of Teams, MS Teams. You also can add uh, access to cloud environment, Amazon Wasabi, uh, Amazon EC2, and Azure storages. It's it's a new it's a new version. Let me go back to uh, existing version, not beta. So you can also add file shares, physical machines, and application like Oracle. Also, you can add storage devices like like HP. So another uh, another part of our inventory of our database is transporters. Transporters uh, is a transporter is a service. It's our Nakiva agent that uh, it's that is responsible for transferring data from the source to the destination. For example, from VMware VMware virtual machine to the repository. You can deploy a transporter. You can add existing transporter or like install service or appliance, or you can deploy new transporter from our software directly from our software in in the virtual environments, VMware, Amazon, and Nutanix. Uh, also, transporter is added automatically if you add to the inventory some physical machine. So if I go here, for example, one second. I have several environments, so I will switch between them to show you more. So you can go to the settings. And you see in my inventory, I, I have one physical machine, Ubuntu. You just, uh, to edit, you need just to have IP address and root credentials of that machine and be sure that SSH port is enabled. And when I edit this machine to the inventory, the same name transporter appears in my transporter my section of the database. Uh, and finally, you need to have repositories where you uh, will save your backup copies. Uh, if you see, you can create different types of repositories. So it could be a local folder, SIST and FS shares, Amazon EC2 instances and their storages, Amazon S3, Wasabi, SaaS. SaaS is a special repository that should be arranged for, um, for making backup of a master 6 object. Also, you can add the duplication files like these ones. Okay, so when you edit inventory transporters and repositories, ah, by the way, you can add also tape libraries, tape drives, if you have them in your environment to be able to make backup copies, to, to make backup of your backup copies from the repository directly to the tape. So it's uh, some kind of realization of uh, schema three to one. So you need to have for critical machines at least three copies, one on your local repository, another on the tape, another carrier, and the third one outside of the office. So for example, in the cloud. 
Okay, when you have inventory, transport and repositories, you can go to the dashboard and create jobs, backup replications and backup copy jobs, site recovery. Well. Depending on what you added to the inventory, you will be prompted to select one of these types of uh, backup jobs or replication jobs. I have almost everything excluding cloud directly. So for example, if I want to make me aware backup job, I click on it. Now I can select uh, the source machine, virtual machine using you host clusters or VM and templates. It's the usual view uh, which is used in uh, this sphere or this site console. Uh, but most interesting is the policy view when you can select your machines automatically. So you can create several rules, unite them, and every rule can use the search by VM name, VM tag, location, data store, network, size of VM, amount of RAM or CPU, CPU, power state, and even IP address. So for example, if I want to select some smaller search machine, I select search criteria size of VM. Here I select is less than, and let me type 10 gigabytes. So you see, I got automatically all machines that has that have VMDK files less than 10 gigabytes. If I add one zero, you see I've got more. And if I have, for example, yeah, I have more. Okay. So policy is very good tool to select your virtual machines because it's automatic tool. And if and every time when you start your job or it started itself by the shadow that you uh, need to arrange if you, you may to arrange for the backup job every time our software using these rules and scanning the environment environment and all virtual machines even added after creation of that job will be added automatically it's very nice uh, uh, tool because uh, you may be sure that no no any new virtual machines that you created uh, that's it's uh, satisfied to these rules uh, will be uh, uh, will be out of backup process so new machine will be automatically added to the list of the machines virtual machine is included in this backup job if these rules are satisfied so let's go to the simples and for example, I just I can select manually my virtual machine, or I can use some search. For example, I want to back up small machine. Let me select it. I click next to the destination tab of the backup job wizard. And uh, now I need to select where I want to save my backup copy. So select the destination or repository. Uh, you see, I have several repositories. Some of them are available and some of them are great. It's not available because these repositories are especially for MS365 objects. So let me select this one. In advanced tab, you see this announcement. To reuse existing backup, expand and plan setup and specify the target backup for each VM. Uh, you see, I know that uh, I already have the backup copy of this machine, so I click, can click on expand. Here you can see all the disks that uh, uh, present on this uh, virtual machine. If you have several of them, you can select which one you need to exclude, for example. I have this small machine, this is just those machine, one disk, so nothing to uncheck. So here I know that I already have existing backup copy of this machine. 
And to prevent another next full backup of this machine, I just prefer incremental one. I need to select the existing backup copy. So I click to expand and let me select one of these backup copies. If I select this one, it's it's prohibited because it's already used by other active backup job. But if I select another one, I can use it because the backup job that created this backup copy already deleted. So there will be no any conflict between existing backup job and newly created backup job. I click next. On a shadow tab of the backup job wizard, I can select how often I want to start to run my backup job. As you see, you can run it daily, weekly, monthly, early, run after another job. Run after another job is interesting option. Uh, for example, again, go to the schema 321. You may firstly create backup copy on your local repository and then select run after another job and create the backup of the already created backup copy from the repository to another repository or to the table. Uh, and the periodically option is very interesting. Uh, for example, if you want to run this job on work days every four hours, and now you will see the calendar that the job will start at 12 and will run every four hours. Additionally, I want to add another shadow for weekends. And I select weekends, and you see I've got a two day, days uh, mark. So I want to run this job on weekends, not so often as a work day, in work days, only twice a day. And you see there is a backup job window. So on work days, every four hours, on weekend, only twice a day. Okay, you can hide calendar. By the way, calendar is a very interesting option. You can manage uh, the time window uh, of your backup job and see all your backup jobs that were scheduled. So let's go further to the next tab of our wizard. And here in retention, you need to select how many retention points you want to save for this uh, job. Uh, currently, we support up to 4,000 retention points for a recovery for backup job. It means that every machine that uh, which is included in this in the list of this backup job uh, can uh, save up to 4,000 retention points. Uh, so you may select 4,000 and it will work. Additionally, you can select uh, using the schema father, grandfather, father, son, early, monthly, weekly, and daily backups. It will be additional backups. So uh, you can read about this in our, uh, in our, uh, in our um, user guide. Uh, by the way, anytime if you put your mouse cursor to the icon with letter I inside, you will see a short description of this option, of the corresponding option. In case if you want additional information, just go to the help, click on help, click online help center. You will be transferred to our help center. You see we have a user guide and knowledge base, forum, release notes and API reference. If you click on user guide and for example, uh, Type create backup. You will get all related articles. You see there are this article. This article is uh, exactly what we are doing now. If you click on it, you will get step by step instructions how to create backup job. Okay, so go back. 
you see there is such a immutability option that we have immutability option means that uh, you may uh, select uh, you may assign to uh, some of your virtual machine backup copies the properties immutability it means that no one can change or remove these backup copies for selected number of the days so it's only available on repositories that were arranged on the linux based machines so because only linux system has the immutability attribute for their files and folders you can read about this again uh, here if you put your mouse cursor to the flag i'll go to the to the user guide in tape type immutability for example you will be uh, um, uh -huh. I make this type. Okay, you see, if you click on it, you can read everything about it. Okay, go back or go further to the last tab of our wizard. Uh, it has uh, the biggest quantity of the options. So, first of all, I want to rename my backup job my default default name on the backup job Let me number seven for example okay so everywhere mode everywhere mode means that you are running on your virtual machine uh, windows operational system uh, and volume shadow copy series is running there as well Volume Shadow Copy Service enable, uh, enable you to save uh, not save data yet uh, that are used by some software, for example, some programs, Microsoft SQL, Exchange, or Active Directory. So enabling this feature, you can be sure that before uh, making snapshot of this virtual machine to transfer it to the backup repository. All the data from the RAM, so all the data about uncompleted operations will be saved to the disk, and then you only remake backup. So if you don't have this service, for example, uh, it's not running Microsoft Windows, and you don't need uh, and you don't want to use uh, volume shadow copy service, or for example, it's running Linux, which uh, de which doesn't has doesn't have such a service. You may disable it. I am running DOS on this machine, the smallest machine. I do not know this. So I don't want to, to use this option to get some alarms of that uh, everywhere mod is not working there. So I disable it. Change tracking option enable you to use VMware uh, option, VMware feature. Use change block tracking mechanism. This mechanism checks the current state of the virtual machine, virtual machine disk, and select only Z blocks that were changed since the last backup. So only change blocks will be transferred to the repository. But we have our own proprietary method in case if by some reason you cannot use VMware embedded mechanism of chain block tracking, you can use our proprietary method that is, that is included in our software. It works perfectly as well. Okay, so network acceleration and encryption. These uh, options enable you to compress data, first of all, just acceleration, to compress data before transferring. So our transporter will compress your DMDK data before transfer to the 
repository to the destination transporter, which will uh, uncompress them, extract them before uh, placing to the repository. Additionally, if you are using, for example, uh, repository on the remote location, and you can get this location only through the internet, you may ask to make encryption of uh, the data, of the transferred data. So even using internet, you can be sure that nobody reads this data. VM verification will enable you to, to check backup copy consistency. Uh, consistency. So uh, we use two ways of verification. The simplest is a boot verification. It means that when the backup uh, when the get backup uh, step of transferring data to the repository is completed, our software will create new virtual machine with the same configuration as the search machine and establish direct connection between this newly created machine with VMDK file located in our repository. So no transfer data will be take place in this situation direct connection to the repository will be established. So boot verification means that our software is checking if the uh, VMware, uh, VMware tools are running on that machine. If they are running, it means that uh, this machine was, uh, was up and running. Additionally, you may request screenshot verification, it means that additionally to, to boot verification, our software will make screenshot of the welcome screen of the recovery machine. So for example, for Linux, it will be press control out there to login for Linux uh, type your username. Additionally options exclude swap files and partitions. It means that uh, our software will exclude all unused, never used blocks, or blocks that are uh, used by deleted files. And this uh, unused blocks, is these blocks that are used on deleted, uh, deleted files. File files it's, uh, and partitions clear, it's just uh, temporary files and partitions. So uh, next step, you need to decide how often you want to create full backups. Uh, by default, we are using uh, synthetic full, uh, synthetic full backups. It means that cross backup will be a full, cross backup copy, and the rest of the backups will be incremental. And every Friday, every Friday, our software will collect all transfer data uh, using full back, just full backup and uh, the last uh, chain, a chain, uh, chain of incremental backups and create some kind of synthetic backup. So there will be no full backup at all. There will be collection of all the existing first full backup and the chain of incremental backup. If you want to use active full, we just recommend it time by time to use active full backup, you may select this option. You can select them um, using job runs, for example, every 10th job run, our software will collect synthetic full backup. Or you can, you can take active full backup. Okay, so next steps. So you can send, if you select this box, you can send additional reports to uh, email addresses that you can type in here. Uh, they can be divided by semicolon. Uh, for pre-job scripts and post-job scripts. Uh, for example, if you're running Linux machine and you can cannot use Apple remote, you can create a job script that will safety uh, shut down uh, the critical application 
which data you don't want to lose because uh, if uh, this application is running some data are located in a RAM and without a mode it can be lost so prevent this uh, lost you can create a job script which will shut down this application safety before making screenshot when the screenshot made you can uh, when the backup uh, job transfer data transfer is completed you can run post job script which again start your application uh, in tra that data transfer section you may select the, uh, the mode how this data will be transferred some mode means uh, that uh, you can create some direct connection with the SAN and data will be transferred directly to the, this established connection hot and hot at only mode means that uh, your transporter uh, which is responsible to read data from the source is at the same is uh, on the same host as the source machine and this will allow you to read data on the source machine not from the from the folder of that machine but directly from the data store of that ESXi host uh, which will increase the speed of the backup one only mode means that all data will be transferred through your local network so you may select automatic selection you may uh, leave automatic selection and our software will decide which which uh, mode will be the best transporters you can create uh, you can assign dedicated transporter for for this job for example if you know that all these machines are located on the uh, dedicated host you may assign directly transporter that is uh, deployed on that ESXi host to enable hot at mode and to make your backup quicker. Okay, uh, also you may um, you may limit transporter load. For example, if you have several transporters and you don't want to wait when uh, one transporter complete uh, transferring all the data you may add additional transporters automatically they will be uh, they will be added from transporter pool but i don't have transporter pool here but you may create some transporter pool for each esxi host for example and you can deploy not one transporter on esxi host but maybe two or three and uh, in case of overload of this one, of the first one, additional transporter will be involved in this backup job. So you can parallel your, uh, you can make uh, data transfer parallel uh, together uh, from two transporters. Additionally, you can enable bandwidth throttling as the, I showed you as a rule and create some rule which will disable this job to use more than 10 megabits per second of your local network and finally bottleneck detection option allow you to allow this backup job to create additional logs that will be placed to the software folder of our program and later you can go to hell and click on request support create bundle and send this bundle to the support team additional logs will allow uh, our support to find the problem quickly and provide you with the best solution how to create some workaround or how to customize your backup job finally if you if i click finish this job will appear in my uh, on my uh, dashboard and uh, will start running in accordance with the created schedule. If I click finish and run, it will run immediately in addition to the scheduled run. So let me click finish and run. 
you see there are there are some uh, other virtual machines i can select for which machines this run is uh, uh, applied so i have only one so i click run and you see you will get in activities new job this is my job that i just created and on dashboard you can see more details about this job this one so you can see the progress of this job what it's uh, doing now what's our structure is doing now you can see all job settings so the tabs that we passed uh, uh, following the backup job wizard you can see which virtual machine included in this backup job target repository and transporters which are used to transfer data when snapshot is completed you will see the progress of transferring speed and raw data so that's all for creating and running the environment backup job do you have any questions the one question that does spring to mind is i have certain customers that have got a rule that is governed by our local council where when they install an environment it can't actually be the latest version so for example if the latest version is 10 they can only run version 8 or two versions before because in skills in the UK, councils govern certain policies, and around the IT, um, you can only run two versions prior because they believe that is more secure. Would that be possible with Nikivo to run two versions prior or not? So, may, may, uh, may clarify. So, you're asking if we support file versioning, yes? No. If you've no. got if you've got a product that is running version ten, the skills can only run version eight. So if so, Nikita, you have different versions of our software. Yes, skills okay. can only run two versions prior to the latest. They cannot use the latest. You see, you see the backup backup data uh, are saved at the same format for all versions it doesn't matter if you have backup copy you can recover it by any version yeah but what i'm what i'm saying is when i get a customer coming to yourselves are you able to give them the previous version installation file yes we can find it we need to ask support to provide it because it's not uh, available on the public site so but in archive uh, we have such version so if you need uh, the previous version just let Sergey know and he will arrange the link to this uh, version perfect well thank you for the demo it's been very very informative and most helpful uh, Sergio, with regard to the nfl license to address in on my email is that with regard to uh, me submitting the request last night Mm. Sergey, could you please answer this question? Sergey? Mm. Sergey, are you still there? No, we cannot no. hear you. And now we can hear you. Okay, go ahead, please. Sergey. Sergey, please say something. We don't hear you. Uh, yes, what about now? How can you hear me right now? The moment. Okay, good. That's good. Yes, 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 yes. There were some so issues. I'm with this application yes can you please come again with a question please 
Sure. So I was just asking then, uh, the email that I got last night from Bruce with regard to the NFR request I sent in, the email that you sent me with regard to the license, what is the durability of that license and what are the terms of it? Oh, you mean the NFR license? Uh, last night I submitted on your website. I already sent you back uh, the NFR license just during this meeting, yes. Uh, so this license is concerned for 180 days. Yeah. And it includes all the enterprise features included in the product. So you can feel free to test it in your laboratory. And yes, that's like the extended uh, trial version for the sellers that we provide. That is perfect. Well, once we finish 180 days. That's perfect. Once we finish this meeting a couple of minutes, then I will wait for you to send me the recording. I will then yeah. send that out to my customers within the next 30 minutes. And in the meantime, I will set up the key vote in my demo lab and apply the license and we can take it from there. If I need anything else in the meantime, I will contact you. Um, but other than that, thank you once again for the session this morning. Yes, I hope it was informative of a meeting. It was perfect. All oh, right, really, really, uh, yes, really great for that. Uh, thank you, Alexander, for your assistance. All right, okay, yes, Thomas. Have, so. name by mine. Thank you for that. Bye bye. Thank you once yeah. again, Sergio. Yeah, bye bye. Bye bye. Hi, guys. Hi, YouTubers. Hi, fellas. Hi guys, this is another video in regard to Bitcoin and Gratitude. I've had a couple of customers ask me several more questions and I thought I would just create a quick video to answer the questions. As well as at the end of this video, there is also a 50 minute overview of the Gratitude platform. It is an in-depth overview and it is the latest version of Gravity Zone as well so everything that you will see in this video is everything that you will have access to as either a partner in resale, an MSP to manage your clients or mainly for you as the business manager, your machines, your group, excuses etc etc. So in the previous video where we talked about Gravity Zone I was discussing about updates, about deployments, about management, and just something about that support and how to prepare us. Uh, in this video, I've had quite a lot of customers ask me about how it compares to reset on the detections, because some customers say when they've used, for example, Express Go Reset, which is obviously due to Amazon, and so a resell throughout the absolute services corporation that what will happen uh, is basically the ESET aren't detecting every virus exactly even though it says it is it's given quite a few false positives but that's the on-premise solution or the cloud now the one thing that I would add to that as well is that with Bitdefender there has been a lot of more detections. Um, I've yet um, to create a virus that has actually gone past it because I've actually tested it in my lab while I have been creating viruses. I also use another solution called Simulate, which we discussed in another video, um, where the network is constantly being tested when live viruses, whether it's viruses from 10 minutes ago, viruses from which were five seconds ago, and gravity zone, not to stand by it, picks up every single detection. So then I've gone to gravity zone, I've said, well, hang on a minute, what happens if it misses the detection? What happens if it infects that machine? What would you do? And my partner's got back to me, the distributor and said, Tom, we guarantee you 
then it will pick it up. If it doesn't, it will go into quarantine, but it will not infect any thing on the machine. And on top of that, the confidence in my manager's voice said it all. And this is the reason on why I said in my previous video, I wish I moved the big defender sooner. The support is fantastic, the product is fantastic, the roof is fantastic. I know in a couple of video, couple of um, reports and reviews on the internet, there's some say e sets easy to use a configure, but actually a downside is it isn't detecting um, what you would expect and quite a lot of inappropriate or bad things are going through it. Whereas Bit Defender, in my opinion, it is easy to configure. I thought it was as simple as one, two, three. Um, but obviously everyone may not be as technically advanced as me. Uh, some people said it's hard, some people said it's easy. But once it is set up, you can create several policies. Like I discussed in the previous video about doing the skill where you could have possibly one, two and three. And we discussed how policies could take effect on the machine, whether it could be, you know, games after four o'clock, or staff for example have access to more websites than students. With Bit Defender and the way it creates the policies, you can either create a policy for the home of that group. So you I as the MSP would have a company or a group within there, I could see the tree of the users and how they've configured it. Because obviously I manage their tenancy. So basically the admin will see that but he will see his network and whatever groups is configured under there. Whereas I think, see things as MSP and look differently. But as MSPs, we obviously can't give out that information, but it really doesn't affect you and how the gravity zone portal works. But it's the same goal regardless of the way policies take effect, whether it's machine or group. Personally, I would recommend, in my professional opinion, doing it to groups, because if you do it to machine, I've heard that it can be sometimes a bit harder to remove them off machines and it sometimes can be a bit sluggish. The reason I say to do it to groups is because that's dynamic with AD and them changes take effect on our internet. Now, what you've got to remember is every network is optimized. Every use case, every customer, every need, you know, is going to be different. What you've got to remember is that Little changes will take effect. Big changes will take a bit longer. But going back to what I was saying about the detections and how it's configured, I just wanted to talk about Uncle Bit and how it's configured so you get a bit of an understanding of how it picks up its detections. Within the settings, there's three options there's light, moderate, or everything. Everything is It'll scan network chairs, machines, you name it, it scans it. Moderate, you can set the requirements, but you can also set exclusions and what you want to include, what you don't want to include, etc. When Bitdefender is turned off or initially installed, um, it will scan every 48 hours. But we do recommend it's best to create an exclusion later if it's actually. This file, yes, it does detect the device, but actually we needed it, and now it's gone. So we recommend you create exclusion list before you even begin to deploy. We recommend that you create all your policies in one go, all your groups in one go. Then deploy it, add the machines to the groups, and that way it's segmented by policies or groups. That's just a quick tip, easy to manage, maintain. But going back to the detections, yes, gravity zone can be a, a bit tricky, but in my opinion, I said it isn't. Um, but overall, gravity zone does detect everything. And it does detect obviously what you don't need to detect. Now, there may be times where after this video that it does detect things. I can only say what my manager has stated to me, but personally, I can see at times there will be the odd time where Bitdefender may detect it, but it may 
classify it as something that you may not expect. For example, Word, it may not be classed as an office application, it could be classed as miscellaneous, for example. But it will still detect, it may just put it into different categories. But that's where you would use the in depth reporting. And I must say, the reporting tool is second to none. The reports that you can download, the reports you can create, the reports that you, know, you can give to the executive team, the management team, the IT team, you name it, Bitdefender has got every single report that you need. And it even lets you make changes. And you know what? You won't even need to make changes because the report has everything in that you need. It is so informative, it is on form, it's everything that you need. It won't take you 30 days or 40 days to go through to find what you want in a page. It takes minutes. And that then gives you priorities onto other tasks on the network or as a manager to do other things that you require. But the deceptions, second to none. The management interface, second to none. I will not just have this tool and products and solution on it and then go from a reseller to an MSP. Within minutes of having a meeting from a distributor, in case I didn't think it would live up. And you know what? After seeing the demo and after testing it, it does everything that I've expected to and so much more. And I wish I did six months ago. I really wish I did. And you know what? Moving forward now, we also can be a bit defender and there is no um chance of change on the MSP. Now I know some customers may not like that because of the use of if they're a traditional reseller, but you're going to be moving to a separate company that will purely do reselling and they will cover all of your needs. As I said in the previous video, we will discuss with you a couple of months in advance what you're wanting to do. We will create a plan with you whether you want to stay with us or whether you want to leave with us. And if you want to leave us, that's sad to hear because you don't want to go down the MSP side, but we want to make sure that the transition over to say another distributor or another partner happens. So we will even assist in finding the right solution for you to show that there's no good feelings here, it's a pleasure doing business. We will then talk to the distributor on your behalf and say, well, do you want to make with this solution? So that way, it is also assisting you on managing your network. And I think it's a courtesy as well. I think a small gesture like that really goes a long way. But on top of that, the customers do want to stay. We will create a plan on pricing, on what to expect monthly. Now, the one thing that I would say that I love about Gravity Zone and the Gravity Zone platform is you only get charged for the licensing. So when I create reports every 20 days, with the 30 day reports, you will be billed for that amount. If there's any changes, let me know in before 30 or the 28, depending on the month, and then we will take it from there. The billing, so that way you're not charged too much and you need a rebate or you charge too less. So obviously, I need to get some more money. That way, it covers your machine usages. Now, say for example, you're a school and you have a thousand machines that includes laptops, desktops, and servers. Okay. And you said look Tom, we've got a thousand machines here. No, let's make it easy. We've got 950 desktops. No. Let's make it simple. 900 desktops, 75 laptops, 25 servers. Now when did the servers are virtual, physical, does not matter. The agent is the same regardless of how it installs. Same as desktops and laptops. Just make sure 32 bit, 64 bit. Same with the server operating systems, but the majority of the server operating systems are 64 bit, especially from Windows Server 2012 R2. But obviously, the majority of the companies now, whether it's education or corporate or whatever, are going to be either on 2016, 2019, or 2022. Personally, we're on 2022. And when we did the migration, best thing we ever did. So, as I was explaining then about saying, let's make it easy. 900 desktops, 50 laptops, 75 laptops, 25 servers, and the results were there. It doesn't matter on um, the usage. So you could say you bought a thousand machines, actually, you've only installed it on 999. You would only be able to be out 999 if you still have that license spur. 
but only once the agent has been installed, it will then be allocated to, say, company A company or company B, whoever used it first. I will then be able to reallocate licenses within seconds of you telling me, right, Tom, company A, I need 100 more licenses. All I need to do is go into my grant and MSP portal, give you 100 more licenses like that. It will then fire me an email confirming the changes. I will then forward that changes to, say, the management or to the IT director and the head teacher of skill, for example, when it's happened about and say, well, you request 100 more endpoints. The price is this originally. The price is going to go up to this. I will then notify my distributor who I go through of the changes and say, yes, I'm aware of the end of the month. My price and cost to yourself will be going up because actually we've got 100 more licenses just to make you know the business. That way, it doesn't cause any computer to say, hang on, Tom, distributor. Why have you not told me you've got 100 more licenses? That way, it's just making them courtesy and more easy and easier to manage. But what I love is the agent is so simple, whether it's deployment or installation. And the detections and the support and everything. And going back to the, some of the questions that was asked of him, yes, detections are fantastic, installation, licensing questions, easy. You will not be penalised for what you don't use. You will not be penalised for going over unless um, you've not paid the difference when we've notified you in advance by emails, of which we would automatically do. It's an automatic system. And we've put read receipts, we would notify you when it's been opened. And our distributor would also be tagging the emails whilst they're fully aware of that. So if you come to us and say, you've not notified us, I'm gone. There's the email saying you've tagged it, you've read it, and actually the distributor's been tagged in, so unfortunately, you do have to pay the difference. For example, if you use 99 machines instead of 100, that license is, you know, one license is free. I absolutely love this licensing model because usually with the reseller model, it's one license, one machine, yearly price. But when you go to volume licensing, yes, it does come cheap and you get like, you want to use support but the main difference is is with the support and updates every month you're covered for MSP but when it expires on the reseller side of it you would have to pay them for updates and support and that's why we always say to the resellers make sure you've got up to date support so if anything ever happens you're covered and you know you can't say to us well you've not told us of of support we've got to teach you what you can help you've got to pay for that support and then once you've got the support we can then start assisting unfortunately yes that does look bad but we notify you way in advance because we want to make sure that you're in the latest versions and that you want to update and support service update because in that way if anything does go wrong you're covered by i use the msp distributors and companies themselves. But going back to Bit Defender, with regard to some of the differences between resale and MSP support, resale, you just get like one. Well, then I would pass it on to my partner manager at Bit Defender. They would then put it through as a partner request. It would go through as a normal high but a normal request. With regard to MSP, we do level one support and level two support just to give you that bit of an edge to make sure with it. We can collect some more alarms or do remote session or remote print screens, for example. So we will do whatever is required from our side or from remoting in. Um, and all sessions are recorded for quality issues, training purposes, of course. Once we've got the relevant information, documentation, logs, etc., we'll then pass it on to our manager on the level two side which is still the same manager, but would pass it on and then that goes through on a high request for MSP monthly. It, it just goes a tad high because of the way that the market is shifting. But as I've explained in previous videos, what I love about Bitfinder is the second on support, is the second on the way that they manage market and succeed with their products, the way that they're constantly invested to make the products better. I know with other vendors that I work with in the past, they just buy companies out and then it gets 
you know, here's 10 products to use, and here's 20 products to use, and 30 products to get trading courses. That isn't nice, that isn't good. So, with Bitdefender, one portal, one solution, everything through it. Patch management, Windows updates, policies, antivirus, hips protection, compliance reports, web filtering, web filtering policies, application list, application bot list, you name it, it's in there. And if you do visit a feature, a lot of us know, we'll let Bitdefender know directly do it. You think there could be an improvement, and they could say, hang on, that's a good improvement, that's not. Let them know it'll be in, say, the next update. But we will always make sure that we've got your backs covered. In the next section of the video, part two, there will be a 45 minute video overview of the GrowSome portal in detail. If you've got any further questions or like a personalised demo to focus maybe on certain areas, for example, reporting or how policies get pushed across or how you know we will deploy it in the test network, then let us know. And we will be absolutely happy to assist you 24 7, 365 days a year. No request is too big or small. I and one of the big defender team behind us will make sure that the request is answered in a prompt manner, regardless if it's licensing, technical, demo, you name it. We have you covered. And moving forward, we have your backs and we'll make sure that you're protected. But remember, stay safe. Stay secure and remember absolute cyber services and SP to bit defender and accredited relationship but on top of that defeating tomorrow's attacks today and that is exactly what absolute cyber services the absolute cyber services corporation and ACS corporation is going to continue to do giving better services better products to the customers making sure that changes happen promptly, fast and effectively, minimising the impact of downtime and making sure that uptime is at a more optimum, as well as making sure if there is any maintenance required on the grab tour, everyone will be notified in ample amount of time and that the policies that will be applied to the machine stay applied and the machines will be protected. If anything ever changes, we will always notify you as the earliest as possible, but we are aware though at some occasions that maintenance will need to take effect urgently and unfortunately sometimes you may just not pick up the email in time but we will always try our best to let everyone know on the Bitdefender MSP or the reseller side. Now when it does come to the fact that we are only out the MSP side, we are actually in the process of rolling out to a couple of our customers and so far it's going fantastic. When it does come to notify you, we'll create a plan and a time zone and a time frame. The same way the reseller side, um, and obviously when licenses are coming up for ESA and for Kaspersky, we'll let you know as soon as possible, uh, give you ample amount of time to make changes, whether you want to stay with ourselves or if you don't, as stated before, we'll transition it over to a new partner, try to find a nice solution for you that you need. That way is making it easier for yourselves to focus more on your day to day tasks. Just giving it a nice courtesy because loyalty, respect just go a long way, and I think that is a very nice touch. Well, anyway, thank you for watching another video on Bitdefender GovTo. Thank you again to Bitdefender for nominating us to be one of your loyalist MSPs. And once again, in a couple of seconds, there's going to be a video of Bitdefender from Gravity to Earth. This is the latest version, so everything that you will see is a 12 of the 8th, 22, at 14.50. Everything is the latest. If anything changes, we will make the relevant changes to this video. Still kept up to date for everything that's going on. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the webinar. If you need any further services, contact us on the website, link in the description, request a demo, personalised demo, or any other services or request. Please let us know. One of I, Bitdefender, or any other solution expert team will be more than happy to assist you. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Thank you everyone for attending the Bitdefender Gravity Zone Security Webinar. Today we'll give you information on who Bitdefender the company is. We'll follow that up with 
a technical overview of the engine that drives our award-winning protection. Finally, we'll jump into a demonstration of our Gravity Zone Management Console. If you have any questions, please reach out to your account manager. We can schedule a one-on-one -on -one follow up call with an engineer to review any technical details you may want to discuss. Let's start with a brief overview of our company. Our products start with the Bitdefender Gravity Zone that provides advanced endpoint security. We have data center and cloud security products like our unique agentless hypervisor introspector for Citrix Zen Server. We provide network security and unprecedented visibility into threats with our network traffic security analyzer. And we also deliver enterprise level services, including our managed endpoint detection and response and professional services. We have over 17 years of innovation with almost half of our staff in research and engineering. Our 500 million endpoints feed our machine learning with threat data. That helps us innovate with over 30 security layers and over 70 cybersecurity patents. Our technology is used in products by over 150 OEM partners. In 2008, while the industry was concentrated on improving signature-based detection, we knew that wasn't enough. Signature-based security alone is a catch-up game, and we realized to truly protect our customers, we needed to stay ahead of the threats. That's why we were the first company to develop machine learning-based threat detection. Our machine learning has over a decade of cybersecurity threats to learn from, putting it at a distinct advantage over our competition. This makes our threat protection uniquely powerful against advanced zero-day threats like ransomware. We currently hold 48 patents, seven of which are specific to machine learning technologies with 28 more pending. We continue to innovate with new technologies and features like the introduction of HyperDetect in 2017, which is a tunable extension of our machine learning technology. We expanded to provide managed EDR services in 2018. And in 2019, we added integrated endpoint risk analytics into Gravity Zone. We will explore these technologies a little bit later in this demo. Our innovation translates into industry leading results when it comes to independent testings. If you're unfamiliar with AV comparatives or AV tests, these are independent nonprofit organizations that test a wide variety of malware solutions. You can think of these independent tests as uh, consumer reports of cybersecurity solutions. Year over year, Bitdefender has been at the very top of their list in not only detection of known as well as unknown malware, but we're also been at the very best at doing so without sacrificing performance. Bitdefender is trusted to protect the sensitive data of some of the biggest companies throughout different industries, including finance, healthcare, education, and government, among others. We have case studies on our websites if you are interested in learning some more about these customers. In the next few sections, we're gonna take a look at the technology behind our Gravity Zone product. Bitdefender Gravity Zone is a comprehensive security platform that allows you to protect all of your endpoints in your environments, desktops, laptops, physical servers, virtual environments, and mobile devices. It is compatible with all major operating systems, all existing hypervisors, and multiple cloud platforms. It provides security automation, a high level of visibility, and simple and efficient manageability from a single centralized management console that communicates with a lightweight yet powerful single agent. Gravity Zone is designed to protect you from threats across the entire threat landscape by offering a layered solution that is delivered via a single lightweight agent and a single management console. As we mentioned before, our Gravity Zone product protects you with a layer solution that starts with a hardening and control layer that inoculates your environment against potential attacks. Next, we have a pre-execution layer that uses signature-based heuristics and machine learning to identify both known and previously unknown malware. Our on and post execution layer monitors for suspicious behavior, and then that allows you to take automatic action on damaging processes and can provide you with investigation response reporting and alerting tools to better manage the security of your environment. Let's dive into a few key features. Our hardening control layer features several modules designed to prevent the attack from ever entering your environment in the first place. 
Our application control module gives you the ability to prevent specific applications from running on designated systems. Our web threat protection protects users from accessing malicious and fraudulent sites using URL reputation behavior analysis and machine learning. You can also use our web categories filter to restrict access to certain types of sites, including adult sites, social media, and much, much more. Our firewall replaces the Windows firewall on the endpoint, giving you centralized management of that feature. Device control allows you to manage permissions for external devices such as USB drives and Bluetooth devices. Our patch management module is an optional add-on that allows you to centrally manage and automate software updates for a wide variety of vendors such as Microsoft, Adobe, Sun Microsystem, and others. And lastly, our full disk encryption also an optional add-on allows you to centrally manage Windows BitLocker and Mac OS File Vault encryption technologies through a single Bitdefender agent and management console, even allowing you to manage recovery keys directly from our console. Our pre and on execution layer uses a combination of technologies and techniques to identify known malware as well as zero day threats. Our powerful machine learning module analyzes the behavior of objects. Those behaviors are tested against our advanced algorithms for any suspicious behavior. The process happens in nanoseconds, and all the analysis is done before the code has a chance to execute on the machine. I, our HyperDetect module offers a tunable extra layer of security with additional behavior analysis models that are trained to detect advanced threat at the pre-execution stage. Our Sandbox Analyzer offers the automatic submission of suspicious files from endpoints to a cloud-based sandbox for detonation and behavioral analysis. We'll talk about HyperDetect and Sandbox a little bit more in a moment. Our exploit prevention technology detects and identifies different exploit methods and protects system memory space that is utilized by common business applications such as browsers, document readers, media files, and runtime engines like Flash and Java. And lastly, our process inspector offers real-time continuous process monitoring, both when the process is executed and when it is active. So processes will be monitored throughout their entire life cycle and suspicious activities will be flagged and remediated. Our integrated EER solution will empower you by providing you with an unprecedented visibility into the life cycle of a potential attack. Our event recorder module captures a variety of activity information from the systems and coordinates with our threat analytics module to create a prioritized list of incidents that need to be investigated. We provide multiple options for incident investigation and remediation. And we also provide visualization of incidents for a better view of how malicious items are propagating throughout the network. Since our EDR is integrated with our endpoint agent, it reduces resource requirements for early detection and incident response. Beyond protecting the endpoints, the detection and remediation layers limit the number of incidents requiring investigation, removing noise and complexity and really simplifying the EDR process. Now let's take a look at the management side of Gravity Zone to give you an idea of how that works. We provide two methods of control center deployment and management. We have an on-premises solution and we have a cloud-based solution. Our on-premises solution is a prepackaged hardened Linux virtual appliance that doesn't require any additional OS licensing or SQL databases. It spins up in under 15 minutes. Our fully hosted cloud solution just requires credentials and you can start setting up and deploying to your environment. There's no cost difference between the two solutions. Once we have our control center set up, you can employ different methods to discover the endpoints. Gravity Zone has dynamic integration with Active Directory. And with our on-premises option, we also offer integration with vCenter, Zen Server, and Nutanix. With Gravity Zone, you can also configure Relay, which is just an additional role embedded in the standard endpoint agent package. Any Windows or Linux machine can be de designated as a Relay. And these machines can help with endpoint discovery, deployments, updates, it can act as a communication proxy between the endpoints and the console. Gravity Zone also gives you a variety of ways to deploy the lightweight endpoint agent. You can push the installation directly from the console to your endpoints. You can use the relay machine once an endpoint package with relay functionality 
has been installed on that machine. You can also use third-party tools like SCCM or Jamf or custom scripts. You can manually install it on an endpoint by building the installation package in the console and putting it on a USB drive or network share for local installation. We also have the ability to generate a URL that can be emailed to users for manual package download and installation. Once you've populated your environment and installed the base endpoint package, configuration and management from the console is very straightforward. We'll go over the assignment of policies and integration with management tools like Active Directory, vCenters, and Nutanix, the configuration of notifications and generation of reports and more in the demo portion. Let's take a look at how Gravity Zone protects virtual environments. Gravity Zone was purpose built for virtualization in the cloud. You may see some AV vendors require full agent and signature database on every virtual endpoint. Bitdefender handles virtual endpoint protection a little bit different in order to maximize VM performance and efficiency. With our approach to protecting virtual environments, we still deploy the Bitdefender agent to your VMs the same one that you'd install on any other endpoint, but they're put into what's called a centralized scanning mode, resulting in a featherweight version of the agent. The featherweight agent only performs lightweight tasks like anti-exploit and process monitoring. While offloading resource-intensive scanning and signature database downloads to a security virtual appliance or SVA on the host, so you're still getting all those additional layers of protection, application control, anti-exploit, machine learning, continuous process monitoring, et cetera. You're just getting them in the smallest footprint on each VM, giving you higher VM density and response times. The SVA is not required on each host, but you can certainly set up multiple SVAs for redundancy, customizable priorities, and even a certain level of automatic load balancing. And again, all of this is managed from the same single console that lets you manage your physical endpoints. We also have patented two-level caching algorithms that help minimize gravity zone impact on performance. This allows us to provide efficient task management so that duplicate objects are not repeatedly scanned on multiple VMs. Gravity zone employs a highly efficient scanning technique which only examines fragments capable of execution so that entire files don't need to be sent from the virtual machine to the SVA, which further helps in reducing resource load. So to kind of sum it all up, what we have with Gravity Zone is a top-rated multi-layered security solution that is engineered for performance, efficiency, simplified manageability, and universal compatibility. Our Gravity Zone product is sold in bundles, as you can see here, starting with business security, and moving all the way up to our ultra security bundle, and also as an enterprise a la carte, where you get to pick and choose exactly uh, which features uh, you want to install. And now I'll hand it over to my colleague for a look at the Bitdefender Gravity Zone Management Console. So this is the Bitdefender console. Uh, you can, this is the cloud console. We actually have two, one is cloud, one is on-premises. There's very little difference between the two, so we're going to focus just on the Cloud Console for the purposes of this demo. Uh, to access the Cloud Console, it's as easy as going to cloud.gravityzone.bitdefender.com. When you first log in, the first thing that you're going to be greeted by is this dashboard. The dashboard is designed to give you a very good overview of the health of your environment very quickly through these different portlets that we have here. You can add as many portlets as you want to focus on whatever information is most important to you, such as if you want to look at anti-phishing activity, for example, or block websites or firewall activity. You can add a portlet to look at any of those things. These portlets aren't just static graphs, however, they're all interactive. So for example, here I can see that there was some malware activity on one of my machines. I can click on it and get additional information. I can see that malware was detected and two issues were resolved. I click on that, I can see the two files that were deleted, the machine where the infection was detected, who was the user that was logged in, and the date and time when that detection happened. In the same way, I can look at, for example, by network patch status, I see that I have five urgent security patches available. So let me click on that to get more information. 
I can see my list of managed machines in my lab. I can see that this machine needs five patches. I click here and it shows me the patches that are available to be installed on that machine. And I can easily just select the patch I want and click install. And it will pull, uh, push out that patch to that machine directly from the reporting section that's tied into the dashboard. So again, the dashboard uh, contains several different pages. And they're, as I said, they're all designed to keep you informed, give you a brief overview of the health of your environment and let you take quick action if anything is detected or anything, if anything needs your attention. Now, the way that our product works, if you do go with our cloud solution, for example, you wanna go ahead and the first thing you wanna do is create packages. And the packages contain the different modules that you're choosing to install. <clears throat> Now, depending on the license type that you have, you might see uh, different modules listed here. In my case, I have an ultra license running here, which has basically all of our modules. So I can select which modules I want to install, everything from anti uh, advanced threat control to you know, encryption, patch management, and something called relay and patch management cache server. What those two things are, basically the way those two function, uh, and I'll explain it through the relay, is that you can designate any machine on your network, uh, preferably a machine that's always on, it could be either a Windows or a Linux machine, to function as a relay or as a patch management cache server. And that machine will basically download all of the updates for Bitdefender if you're just using it as a relay, or for uh, updates for third-party products and Windows patches as well if you're using it as a patch management cache server. It'll store all those and then the rest of the machines on your network can then be pointed to that relay or to that patch management cache server to then uh, download the updates from that relay. Uh, and this way you're reducing the number of machines that are reaching out to the internet for updates and patches and things of that nature. And again, this is all optional. Uh, when you create your package, if you're running virtual machines, this is where you select your scan mode. So you can select to use centralized scanning, which uh, greatly reduces the, the performance impact on the virtual machines by offloading the heavier tasks to a security virtual appliance. So when you create this package, uh, you can select the scan mode to be custom scan um, and then select central scan for those uh, virtual machines. That way they'll be talking back to that security virtual appliance. And then also have the fallback of running a local or a hybrid scan, which uses some cloud scanning as well, uh, as a fallback in case that security virtual appliance is not available for whatever reason. And here basically is where you select the server and uh, tell the, uh, the package to communicate with this security virtual appliance. We have your usual options such as scan before, installation, setting uninstall password, et cetera. We usually recommend uh, removing scan before installation because that'll delay the installation and then running a full scan afterwards. Uh, but you have that option there. And then you connect to either the cloud uh, as a deployer or one of the relay devices you've set up. If you're running the cloud solution, what you want to do is download the package to at least one machine on your network. And once uh, you select the package and click the download links, you can see the different versions that we have here for Windows, Linux, and Mac. And then you would install that, uh, that uh, Bitdefender endpoint protection on one of the endpoints and then use that endpoint to discover the rest of the machines on your network. And the on-premises solution is a little different. There's a, actually a section where you can um, automatically uh, connect to Active Directory and other uh, virtualization providers, do that integration, and then discover your machines that way. Another option that you have, if you have some users that are remote that don't connect to your network very, use, uh, very frequently, you can send them uh, links uh, with the installation package. And you can do this directly from the Gravity Zone uh, interface by just adding their email addresses and clicking send, or you can copy the link uh, right from here and then add it to your own email and send it to the users that way. Now, uh, once you've installed the Bitdefender endpoint protection on at least one machine on your network, if you're using the cloud solution, uh, to discover the rest of the machines, there's a couple of things you can do. If you're using Active Directory, as I'm sure most of you are, you can designate a machine or that machine uh, that you just installed uh, the Bitdefender product on as the Active Directory integrator. And to do that, you would just click on the machine. Let me use this one as an, as an example. You go to integrations, and then you would select set as Active Directory integrator. And when you do that, it'll pull the Active Directory OU and display the machines just like you have them in Active Directory. And then to deploy the Bitdefender solution to the rest of the machines, it's as easy as just selecting the machines, going to task, and selecting install. 
and that'll push out the Bitdefender security to the rest of the machines uh, or to the machines that you select on your network. In this particular case, I already have, uh, I'm only viewing managed machines here for the sake of this demo, and I already have Bitdefender installed on all of these. Uh, some of these are offline. Uh, this one with the orange icon requires a reboot, and this one's just uh, online. You can click into the machine to get additional information, uh, such as uh, you know the IP address and all of that, as well as the protection layers that you have enabled. Uh, as you can see here, I get a message that uh, I need to reboot because of a patch uh, install that I did uh, recently. And I can see the, uh, the scan engines and how I have configured. In this case, I have central scanning with hybrid scanning. And I can see that all the modules are enabled. I can see which policy is assigned to that machine, and I can view the scan logs directly from here if I want to. Now, once you have the Bitdefender endpoint protection installed on your machines, you, you're going to want to fine tune the settings through the policies. And uh, one thing that you can do with our solution is you can create uh, location based rules for those policies. So, a perfect example of this that some of our customers use is they'll create a location based rule that will uh, disable the Bitdefender firewall when the machines are connected to the corporate network because there's already a corporate firewall there that's configured and seems redundant. And then as soon as those machines disconnect from the corporate network, it'll re-enable the Bitdefender firewall. That way the machines are always protected at all times. And as you can see, you can create those location-based rules based on IP address range, gateway address, when server address, DNS, DHCP, network type, and so on. Now, jumping into the policies themselves, uh, you can create a new policy. You can create as many policies as you want and assign them uh, to the machines or to groups uh, as, as you see fit. Uh, so let's still, uh, dig through the policies real quick. Now, I'm not going to go through every single policy here because we would be here for hours, but just to give you a brief overview of how the policies work. And of course, you're welcome to try them all out um, you know, through a trial uh, on your own time if you'd like. So starting with something like notifications, we have several different notification options. So if you want to display pop-up notifications, uh, you can do that, uh, let's say, and you have complete control. So if I only want my users to see pop-up notifications when there's some kind of malware detected, I can do that and set that to only uh, critical alerts in that case. You can also do something like set it to silent mode. In silent mode, uh, the end user is not even going to get the Bitdefender icon in the system tray. All of the Bitdefender services will still be running in the background protecting them. You're still going to get all of the notification and information in the dashboard. But to the end user, uh, the product will be completely invisible. You have your update setting, settings where you can set up your update cadence. And as you can see, by default, we always try to update from the relay servers first and then fall back to the cloud if the relay server can't be reached for whatever reason. You can also select to update on the fast ring or the slow ring, depending on uh, how adventurous you are with, uh, with the updates. Jumping into the anti-malware settings, the on-axis scanning settings are the typical settings you would expect to see. You can scan local file, network files. You can put a size limit on the files you want to scan, scan inside archives, scan for different types of threats, and then take a default action when something is uh, detected to be infected or suspected of being infected. And those actions can be anything from disinfect, deny access, delete, move to quarantine, or take no action. Our advanced threat control is our first of two layers of machine learning. And again, you can set it to be more aggressive or less aggressive, and also take a default action when it finds something infected, such as disinfect block or take no action. Jumping down to our on-demand scan, this is where you schedule your scans to run, such as quick scan, full scan, network scan, et cetera. And once you go into the options, you can see that you can schedule it for, to run a specific date and time, and then you have other options such as uh, you know, if the runtime is missed, run it as soon as possible, or you can skip it to, to run the next time, the next scheduled time. And you have your normal options that, again, you would expect as far as what kind of files you want to scan, whether you want to scan inside archives and email archives, and what actions you want to take when something is found to be infected, suspected, or a rootkit. Hyperdetect is our second layer of machine learning, and it's completely tunable. So you can set it to how aggressive you want it to be based on the type of attack that you're most concerned with. 
So if you're most concerned with ransomware, for example, and not so concerned with grayware, you can then uh, you know, set ransomware to aggressive and grayware to normal. And again, once something is found, you can take an action such as disinfect, deny, delete, move to quarantine, or report only. Uh, we have this uh, report only and extend reporting on higher levels. Uh, what we recommend is the first week or so when you're running the product, uh, HyperDetect does look at behavior, so it might detect a, a, a software uh, as behaving a certain way. An example of this is if you have, for example, a proprietary program that maybe encrypts files on a network drives every Friday night, um, that action might be detected as suspicious by our HyperDetect. So you want to run this on a report only mode for about the first week, create your exclusions for any known uh, safe applications, and then come back into policy and change it to take a default action once those exclusions are, are created. We have this advanced anti-exploit. So a lot of malicious actors, what they're doing is they're targeting specific uh, programs that are used by businesses. And they're looking for exploits in those programs to then uh, you know, drop some kind of malicious payload or somehow get in your network. What our advanced anti-exploit does is it looks at that kind of behavior. And if you have some other process trying to gain a privileged access to let's say Microsoft Word, or accessing the memory in an unusual way, we'll look at that, we'll target those applications, and if we detect anything trying to do that, we're able to stop it then in its tracks. If you have a custom application that you want us to monitor with our advanced anti-expo, you can also add it as well. Uh, so it goes beyond just the list of applications we have here. These are just the most common ones. Now, jumping now to our sandbox analyzer, this is our uh, sandbox in the cloud where you can automatically or manually submit samples. So if there's, for example, someone gets a Word document that contains some macros, you're not sure if those macros are safe or not, you can automatically or manually submit that file to our sandbox. We'll detonate it, we'll run it in the cloud, and then we'll give you back a result on whether it's clean or whether it's infected in, in any way. There's two different modes that you can set this to, one is monitoring and one is blocking. So if you have it set to monitoring, the user won't have access to the file. In this example, let's say the Word file, they're not going to be able to access it. Um, if you have it in blocking mode, if you have it in monitoring mode, they will be able to access it. Um, in blocking mode, um, the file will be blocked until it comes back with a clean diagnostic, uh, clean result. And again, you can take a default action if something is found to be infected. And here you can see the different types of uh, content that we're able to uh, detonate in our sandbox. Our firewall is your standard uh, firewall that replaces Windows. You can set up different network rules, as well as application rules and connection rules, um, you know, to block certain applications or allow certain applications through specific uh, firewall ports. Pretty straightforward. Our content control is where our anti-phishing modules sit. Uh, we can scan SSL traffic. If you use POP3 and SMTP email, we can scan that as well. Uh, our web section is where our anti-phishing engine sits. Uh, and then we have our web access control. Uh, if you have a lot of uh, uh, you know, computers that may be face to public or you want to take more control over what uh, access your users have as far as surfing the web, you can do that with our solution. I can block internet access uh, during specific times and days, for example. And then we also have our web categories filter. So you can filter out uh, certain types of websites. So we're talking about anything from software piracy sites, tabloid sites, gambling sites, adult sites, so on and so forth. You can also create exclusions. So if, for example, you want to block all social media sites except Twitter, you can do that and create an exclusion for Twitter. Or if you want to block specific sites, you can also add them as well. Our application control allows you to uh, block uh, applications. So you can define, for example, to block a Chrome. You can do that by application name or the path. Our patch management solution is an add-on, a very popular add-on, uh, I must say, uh, that not only allows you to manage uh, patches for Windows, but also for third-party products as well. And at the moment, this is only for Windows. Uh, patch management uh, is not available for Mac and Linux. 
This has become extremely popular recently with all of the uh, updates from uh, Microsoft that are creating havoc. Um, this lets you disable the Windows update and take control of those updates. Uh, so there's a couple of ways that you can manage patches. One is automatically and one is manually. So as I mentioned, you can set up a patch caching server or more than one and then have them uh, listed here so that uh, the patches are downloaded from those patch caching servers. You can run an automatic patch scan the way that this works. Any machine that has a Bitdefender installed that has a patch management enabled, you run a patch scan and go through and scan the machines for all the available patches for basically all the software that we support, which is quite an extensive list. And I'll show you that in just a second. And you can schedule that to run daily or weekly or however often you want. You can uh, set the patches to, un uh, to install automatically if you want to. And you can do, uh, again, schedule them to say, for example, security patches get installed immediately when they're available. And then non-security ones, you can install at a different time or not at all. It's completely up to you. Uh, you can, uh, if you leave this unchecked, it'll install the patches for uh, any patches basically that's available, or you can specify vendors. And just to give you an idea of all the vendors that we support, here's a, a brief list. Everything from you know Adobe to Google, Autodesk, Citrix, Microsoft, uh, so on, Sun Microsystem, uh, so on and so forth. And within each of these is the entire family of products. So when you're talking about Microsoft, you're talking about .NET, uh, Office, Exchange, uh, Windows, so on and so forth. It's quite an extensive list and is a good way of keeping your, your system safe from those potential vulnerabilities uh, that products uh, tend to have. Now, I'm going to jump out of the policies real quick to show you a different way that you can install patches. Once you do that patch scan, we create this patch inventory. And the patch inventory gives you an inventory uh, of all the patches that you have available based on that patch scan. So if you want to install a specific patch, let's say that I'm looking for a Microsoft patch, a Windows patch. I know it's a critical patch, so I'm going to change the choose patch severity to critical. It'll only show me critical patches. Uh, you can look for the KB number, for example. Let's say it's, this is a patch I want to install. I can go ahead and push it out to my entire network or individual computers, uh, uh, however you see fit. The other way that you can do the patch install is uh, once you've done a patch scan, you can select the machine in question, for example, or the machines, you can select more than one. Uh, go to tasks, go to patch install. It'll show me all the patches available for those machines and I can select the ones I want and click uh, install. And it'll go ahead and install those patches and I can choose to reboot those endpoints after installing the patches if I want. So you have complete control over the patch management for not only Windows, but third-party products as well. So let me jump back into the policies. Device control is also uh, something very popular, uh, especially with, uh, you know, educational customers that have, you know, a lot of students trying to plug in their USB devices and things like that. If you want to have control over that, uh, you can with our device control. For example, if I want to block USB devices, I can enable device control, go to external storage, go to custom, select USB and select blocked. Now that's all fine and dandy, but what makes our product uh, unique and, and what a lot of people like is that you can create exclusions. And there's a couple ways that you can create those exclusions. So let's say that I want to block all USB devices except the ones my administrators use. I can do that. So I can add an exclusion manually if I know the device ID or the product ID. Or, or when you enable device control, it creates an inventory of all the devices that are connected to all of the endpoints running Bitdefender. And I can select the device from that inventory. So let's say the Samsung SSD uh, belongs to my administrator. I want to make sure that all uh, uh, USB devices are blocked except this one. I just created an exclusion for that one, so he'll still be able to connect to Samsung SSD, but all, all other USB devices uh, will be blocked. We have exchange protection as well. If you're using an on-premises exchange server, uh, we're currently working on a solution for Office 365 Exchange, although that's not available yet. But again, uh, you have all kinds of anti-malware settings with Exchange here, so you can create all kinds of anti-malware filtering rules. And again, take a default action when something is found. You can schedule uh, scan tasks for your uh, uh, email store, for example, 
We also have anti-spam filtering, which again, um, you can create additional rules that filter and you know take additional actions such as uh, deliver the mail or maybe quarantine the mail or redirect you to a different mailbox if you have a spam mailbox, for example, or you can reject the mail. And then we also have content control, which you can filter out content. So if you want to filter out things like, uh, you know, adult uh, subject matter or something like that, you can do that. And again, create different rules. When something triggers one of those rules, you can redirect it or send it to quarantine. Also attachment filtering. So if you want to filter out specific types of attachment, like multimedia files, documents, rest sheets, archives, you can do that as well. We offer full disk encryption. Uh, we use uh, BitLocker on Windows and File Vault on Mac. And uh, you can enable or disable it directly through the console. And an advantage of, of using our console for your encryption solution instead of enabling it on each workstation is that we manage the encryption keys here. So you can easily get the, the user back up and running. So for example, uh, let me see if I have any drives encrypted. Might not because I just rebuilt my lab. Okay, unencrypted. Let's see this one. Uh, okay, so I don't have any drives encrypted right now, but if I did, um, you can get it. You would get a link here that says recovery. You click it, you put in your password, and it'll give you the recovery key so you can get the user back up and running uh, quickly. Uh, we introduced something called risk management with the last update. And this is a task that you run that uh, basically looks at all your security policies uh, on the endpoints that have Bitdefender installed and tells you um, whether you, those endpoints are a security risk at all. And we give you uh, different ratings for different types of, of risks. So um, the ones in bright red are the most um, uh, uh, severe. Uh, and then we give you this uh, risk score as well. So if I click detail here, this will tell me what risks were identified. Some of them can be automatically resolved directly from the Gravity Zone console, and I can see those here. I can click on resolve all or resolve them individually, and you can it'll automatically send a task to do whatever configuration change is needed to resolve that risk. And then there are some that have to take uh, manual action on. And here you can see you select the risk. It'll give you a description of the risk and why it's risk, as well as the mitigation recommendations that we uh, give you on that specific risk. And again, uh, you can get more detail on the risk itself. It gives you, again, additional detail and the mitigation action. So this is new and something that we'll be continuing to improve uh, as we go along. Our reporting is very robust. Uh, as I mentioned before, in the dashboard section, you can run all kinds of reports on anything you want. So if I want to look at the malware status, uh, you can schedule it. So if you want to get a malware status report every day or every week on all your computers or only specific computers, you can do that. And you can email it as a PDF attachment or a CSV file. And when you run, uh, you can run it on specific machines or your entire network. In this case, I'm going to run a report a malware status for this month. I'm going to generate it, and as you can see, it's going to generate the report that will give me uh, the information that I'm looking for. And I can see which machines were infected. Um, there is only one machine. There were two infected files were deleted. And again, you can see the, the malware name, the path, who was the user logged in, and the date and time when the infection happened. You can create additional accounts. So if you have more than one user uh, that you want to set up as an administrator, you can do that and give them additional rights uh, to the Gravity Zone console, such as manage users, uh, view and analyze data, et cetera. And you can also view their activity. So if you want to see, uh, let's pick a company. If you want to see what they've been doing, um, you'll get a log of, of what those administrators are doing. It takes a few seconds. I can see here uh, that this user, which is me, I ran a malware status report, uh, generated a patch install uh, reports, uh, so on and so forth. 
We have our sandbox analyzer that I mentioned. Uh, you can do a manual submission to the sandbox. So if any files or URLs that you want, to, want us to scan, it, you can submit those uh, through this interface here. And when something does come back, does come back, you'll get this uh, report that'll give you information on behavior. And uh, if anything malicious, it'll tell you. And this is the basic report that you get. Um, if you do go with our EDR solution, which is our endpoint detection and response, you get a more detailed report, which I'm about to show you right now. So this is our endpoint protection uh, detection response solution. And basically this combines all the different modules that, that we have. And when any type of uh, threat is detected, uh, we'll give you a inform detailed information on that threat. So you can take additional action. So we have this divided into two sections. Uh, the investigate section is anything that uh, we detected that requires additional action by you, by the user. And the review section is anything that we've already taken automatic action on. We have this confidence score that basically the way that it works is the higher the confidence, the more confident we are that it's actually malicious, the lower, the more likely it is to be some kind of false positive. And let's take, for example, this 90 uh, confidence score. This is obviously something malicious. I can click view and get more information on that attack. It gives me this diagram of the attack itself where I can see the endpoint. I can see uh, the process that triggered it. I can see all the additional processes that were triggered it. Anything in red is anything Bitdefender detected as suspicious or malicious. And in this particular case, we automatically took action on it. But if we hadn't, you can take additional action directly from uh, this EDR uh, window. I can kill it. I can send it to quarantine. If it's a false positive, I can add an, an exception directly from here where I can add it to the block list. Uh, I can also take action on the endpoint itself. I can select it and isolate it from the network to make sure that whatever it got on there doesn't uh, spread to the rest of my network. Or if I saw that, for example, it got inf infected through a Google Chrome vulnerability, I can install a patch directly from here. Now when you select the, the attack itself, it gives you additional information on what it is, the malware type, the malware family, the dates, the hash information, the path, and then it'll give you the, the detailed sandbox report. So if I click on that, it'll take me to the actual report that gives me really detailed information on uh, this attack. This is what the file did when we sent it to the sandbox and we allowed it to detonate. Uh, this will give you an idea of what that file would have done had it infected uh, your network. Uh, this is good information uh, for the uh, SOC, for example, a uh, security specialist to have, or if you have a machine that got infected with this that doesn't have Bitdefender and you want to know what that uh, virus does, you get all this information. So you can see all the files were, that were detected associated with that uh, malware. You can see the behavior here. So any files are created, registry uh, uh, files, uh, registry keys, any scripts, any temp files. You get the MITRE techniques. So I can see here where it modifi modified the registry any files it deleted, any scripts uh, it ran or created. Additional system uh, information, such as any files it created, deleted, temporary files created, registry changes. Uh, if it tried to connect to any external source, so here I can see the network activity, I can use that information to then blacklist that domain in my corporate firewall. You, you get the DNS request, so you can do the same thing. You can blacklist that IP and domain. It gives you a timeline of the attack and a more detailed step-by-step -step timeline so I can see step-by-step -step, uh, what that attack is trying to do. So the first thing it tries to do, for example, in this case, is connect to two external sites and it uh, created a, a cloudcar.exe file. The next thing it did is create a registry key and it tells me the command it used to do that. Uh, it then it went on to a PowerShell script, so on and so forth. And I have all that information in this report. And again, here it is in a list form. And we even go so far as giving you screenshots of what the end user would have seen if uh, they, you know, this file would have been allowed to run in their environment. In this case, this was a, a fake ransomware thing, and that's what the end user would have seen on their screen. Now, going back to the EDR module itself, again, uh, there's other actions you can take. So I can establish a remote connection to that machine where the detection was made. And this will open a command prompt where you can run additional commands. If any remediation actions are, are necessary, you'll see them listed here. And that's, that's pretty much it.
Now with our product, you can also make sure that you keep yourself informed by setting up notifications. So we have this notification pane here. Uh, you can email yourself all kinds of notifications on malware outbreaks, license expirations, upgrade status, hybrid attack activity, anti-phishing activity, so on and so forth. Uh, you can do uh, just select the different type of alerts that you want and enter the email addresses here, or you can do it uh, by alert. So if you want you know, one administrator getting the malware outbreak alerts, uh, you can add those uh, as email here, and then someone else getting license expiration alerts, you can add their email here. So you have complete control over these email notifications. We also have integrations with third-party products um, through our API. So, oops, wrong one. so you can use our API, create API keys to integrate to different logging tools, for example, uh, so that you can get notified that way as well. If you need to contact us for your information, you can reach us on the website that's going to be in the description. You can also contact us on our live chat service. You can contact us on the YouTube comments. We'd be most happy to assist you. You can reach us at acs.cyberservices.com and the contact numbers are plus 44 for international dial and that would be 1704. 893447. You can also reach me on my mobile at 07494 027783. If you need to contact us on any further information about that webinars or demos, please let us know and I and one of the team will be very happy to assist you. Thank you. But please note that when you um, are coming to us with regard to an educational request, please also send in some form of identification or if you are a member of staff, say the IT administrator, Please send in a letter from the head teacher with a manual signature, manual signature, so that we can apply an educational discount. But please be aware that you may have to buy so many licenses in order to get a discount. Thank you and bye bye. Hey folks, it's Mike from Simulate, and we're going to do a quick run through about how to set up and review an assessment within the Simulate platform. Uh, so we'll do the email gateway, and if I navigate to assessment, what you'll see is that our assessments follow a pretty straightforward setup methodology. What, where, and when. What is defined by a template. Templates are playbooks or runbooks, and there's always several that are included out of the box with the Simulate platform. They're kept updated by our team. Uh, but your team may create new templates and customize to focus in on a particular area anytime you want. If we go with the default, we're going to be looking at everything from file acceptance policy, to link rewriting, to uh, different types of malicious attachment detection. You'll then select where you want to do the simulation. In this case, you're going to aim at an email address because we're testing an email vector. You may also aim at an agent, usually just one agent per environment if we're doing something that requires uh, interacting with a device instead of an email address, or a URL if you're doing a WAF simulation, Web App Firewall. Once you've defined that, you're going to define when and how often this simulation will take place. And simulations or assessments can be scheduled to be one-time events. Uh, if you want to spot check something or if a new system is about to go live and you want to do a quick check before it launches, or you could set up daily, weekly, or monthly scheduled simulations. Those are going to allow you to keep a constant watch on the security controls in your environment so that you can react to any changes in the cybersecurity world or in the applications and platforms themselves. Then you'll hit launch and the system will take it from there. And in a few seconds, we'll actually see uh, that the email gateway vector is starting a new assessment and we'll start getting a percentage run, as you can see here, count up to 100% and the completion of the simulation. Now, of course, on the back end of this, we have reporting and reporting is available. Uh, for any simulations that have been done. And we can jump into any one of these and have a look and see how the system performed across multiple areas of testing. Uh, from dummies, which are files that uh, would be files that would be executable, uh, but otherwise not malicious. So we're looking at a particular type of policy there to scenarios which would be easily identifiable as malicious if they're sandbox or go through CDR type systems within an email system, to links and even email policy, all of which can also be viewed offline in technical and executive reporting. 
So if you want to see more about what the system can do or get a full demonstration, reach out to the Simulate sales team. We'll be happy to set that up for you. Or look for the full demonstration video that you can find from any of the Simulate social media or online platforms. Thanks a lot. If you need to contact us for further information, you can reach us on the website link that's going to be in the description. You can also contact us on our live chat service. You can contact us on the YouTube comments if you want to have to assist you. You can reach us at acs.cyberservices.com and the contact numbers are plus 44 for international dial and that would be 1704893447. You can also reach me on my mobile at 07494027783. If you need to contact us on any further information about that webinars or demos, please let us know and I am one of the team will be very happy to assist you. Thank you. But please note that when you um, are coming to us with regard to an educational request, please also send in some form of identification or if you are a member of staff, say the IT administrator, please send in a letter from the head teacher with a manual signature, manual signature so that we can apply an educational discount. But please be aware that you may have to buy so many licenses in order to get a discount. Thank you and bye-bye.